Professor Clements with you as we consider some example problems related to material on electromagnetic waves. If you're using OpenStax College Physics, this would be chapter 24. And we'd like to start here by considering wavelength for a radio wave. And we have a, a selected frequency here, 88.1 megahertz. How do we find the wavelength? Well, for all waves, we have a relationship that the speed of the wave is wavelength times frequency. In the case of electromagnetic waves, light, then we can say C, the speed of light, is wavelength times frequency. Well, we have the information we need. C is a constant, 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. We're given the frequency, trying to find the wavelength. Lambda is our wavelength symbol. So we put in 88.1. I replace mega with 10 to the 6th. And hertz is our unit of frequency, our standard metric unit of frequency. So we're going to divide 3 times 10 to the 8th by 88.1 times 10 to the 6th. You might want to pause, try this on your calculator. And I arrived at 3.41 meters, wavelength of 3.41 meters. This is in the FM radio band in uh, you know, the height of a room, a little bit t a tall room perhaps, but uh, that would be the distance peak to peak for this uh, 88.1 megahertz uh, signal. What about red light? Given the wavelength, what's the frequency? Well, we use the same relationship. The speed of light is wavelength times frequency. Again, speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. We're given the wavelength here, 650. Nano is 10 to the minus 9. We need to be in standard metric units, the meters, so we replace nano with 10 to the minus 9. And then we're trying to find the frequency. Again, you should pause, pull out your calculator, see what results uh, you come up with. And I came up with a frequency of 4.62 times 10 to the 14th. The units here, 1 over seconds. If you notice, we have meters per second on the left for the speed of light. Dividing by meters for the wavelength, we're left with 1 over seconds. And the 1 over seconds is the hertz unit. The hertz in fundamental terms is 1 over seconds. Okay, a little bit of speed calculation. How long does it take a radio wave to travel from the uh, surface of the Earth to the International Space Station? And let's take uh, an orbit altitude. It varies a little bit, but let's say the orbit is 260 miles above the surface of the Earth. That is not the distance to the center of the Earth. Don't try doing a gravity calculation with this number. Uh, but distance... Uh, given from the surface of the Earth to the space station. Our situation is we can use distance equals rate times time. We'll uh, use a constant rate for the speed of light. It's slightly different in air versus uh, the vacuum of space. We're going to ignore that. So we'll calculate using distance equals rate times time. So we have 260 miles. Now you know we're going to be using 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second for the rate. Miles is not meters, it starts with M, but I need to convert miles into meters, so we bring in a conversion factor, 1.609 times 10 to the third meters is one mile. That's the distance, and now we have 3 times 10 to the eighth meters per second, and our miles units have canceled off. We have meters on the left, as we should. And then we have to solve for time. Again, pause and uh, divide. Well, multiply first. 260 times this conversion factor to get meters. Then divide both sides by 3 times 10 to the 8th. And you should come up with a small time. I came up 1.39 times 10 to the minus 3 seconds. Uh, the astronauts on the International Space Station, cosmonauts, uh, whoever's up there, they don't have to wait long for a radio signal to go from Earth up to the space station. There's good communication. You can have conversations. What about uh, if the uh, radio signal is going to the moon? How long will that take as a one-way trip? Well, 238,000. 
again it, this is in miles we need to convert to meters so we'll bring in 1.609 times 10 to the third meters for one mile the miles units cancel that's our distance again our rate is speed of light 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second and this speed is the same for radio, uh, visible light, infrared, x-rays, uh, etc. Um, just trying to reinforce that a little bit. But uh, now the time. Again, pause. Calculate your time value. And I arrived at 1 point, oops, sorry, wrong line, 1.28, 1.28 seconds. 1.28 seconds, so a little over a second. And now we're starting to um, have a noticeable delay. If you watch Apollo videos, you'll hear a little ping sound that would tell the person on the other end that that conversation uh, person had stopped talking and it's time for a reply. Uh, 1.28 seconds, round trip, two and a half seconds. What about uh, taking a radio signal from the Voyager 1 spacecraft that's at the edge of the solar system? It's leaving the region of space controlled by the sun's magnetic field. It's not leaving the region of space controlled by the sun's gravity, but it's leaving the region of space controlled by the sun's magnetic field as of 2013. So, on March 6, 2014, you can go to the Voyager 1 website, You'll, at least I found today, March 6, 2014, this distance to the spacecraft. So let's calculate the time for the signal. Again, distance equals rate times time. So our distance, we don't have to do quite as much conversion, 19.02. We have 10 to the ninth kilometers. We want meters. Well, there's a thousand meters in a kilometer, so that's another 10 to the third. So 10 to the 12th meters, that's our distance. 3 times 10 to the eighth for the speed of light. And trying to calculate the time. Again, you're calculating this as well. And you find that the time is 6.34 times 10 to the fourth seconds. Well, now the seconds unit is not quite so convenient, so let's change that into hours. Change that into hours. And to do that, we apply a conversion factor, so 6.34 times 10 to the 4 seconds multiplied by 1 hour is 3,600 seconds. So that will cancel off the seconds units. And when you take 6.34 times 10 to the fourth and divide by 3600, what you uh, arrive at is 17.6 hours. Though so this spacecraft, uh, you know, is automated to a certain extent, and we're not getting real-time data when it sends data back to Earth. There's a time delay of 17.6 hours for that signal, a one-way trip. Um, and really quite an accomplishment. Uh, you know, the spacecraft has been working for um, 36 years. We'll come up to that calculation in a, in a little bit. Uh, so suppose we have a spacecraft and it's a 4.5 hour delay for the radio signal from that spacecraft to reach the Earth. Where might that uh, spacecraft be located? It takes 4.5 hours for the signal to, uh, to reach the Earth. Well, again, we use distance equals rate times time. Now we're going to calculate the distance. Again, our rate is the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. That's how fast radio waves travel, just like visible light. So distance equals rate times time. We have a time of 4.5 hours. Well, we can't stop there, obviously, because hours don't cancel off seconds. We have to convert the hours into seconds. And again, 3,600 uh, seconds for one hour. And you might want to you know, convince yourself of this. There's 60 minutes in an hour. There's 60 seconds in every minute. Uh, convince yourself 3,600 seconds per hour. And now I can multiply those two together. And we get a distance here, at least I came up with 4.86 times 10 to the 12th meters. That's a lot of meters. What's that mean? Where is this uh, 
uh, object. But let's put it into a little bit more convenient unit for the solar system. That unit is the astronomical unit. That's the average distance of the sun to the Earth. So I'm going to convert units here again. 4.86 times 10 to the 12th meters. And roughly one astronomical unit is 1.5 times 10 to the 11th meters. This is the average distance of the Earth to the Sun. When you do that uh, division, and apply this conversion factor, you find 32.4 astronomical units. 32.4 astronomical units. And if you look up uh, objects in the solar system, you'll find that this is uh, roughly the distance to Pluto. And in 2015, there'll be a spacecraft fly by Pluto, the New Horizons spacecraft, and uh, it's going to take four and a half hours for the data to get back to Earth. Okay, the Voyager 1 spacecraft we talked about earlier, what's its average speed? So this isn't a, a light problem, this is more of a first semester physics problem, average speed. The average speed, let's say average speed, is just uh, you know, what's our distance divided by the time. And I'm playing a little bit loose with terminology here. Probably a little bit better would be average velocity. Um, so let's do that. And just the magnitude of the velocity. You don't want the direction. And in this situation, it's how far away is the object uh, compared to its starting point, and what is its change in position, its displacement. So I'm changing a lot of things here, but it's been a long time since first semester. So displacement over time. Well, we were given that displacement up above, 19.02 times 10 to the, I better, I better leave it in kilometers actually. Okay, that many kilometers. And if you do the subtraction of the years here, you'll find 36.5 years for the, uh, the time of travel. Well, a few things need to be converted. We need to convert this to meters. So one point, I'm sorry, I want to convert to miles. One mile is uh, 1.609 kilometers. So I'm sorry, I'm getting a little small in the, the, the font here I'm using, but uh, one mile is 1.609 kilometers. I would like to get miles per hour. Well, there are 365.25 days in a year. That's why we have leap year, 0.25 days per year, 365.25. And then there are 24 hours in a day. Oh, the days cancel, the years cancel, the kilometers cancel. I'm going to end up with miles per hour. And again, you should uh, use your own calculation capability here. 19.02 times 10 to the ninth divided by 1.609. That's the numerator. Denominator 36.5 times 365.25 times 24. And when I did this, I came up with 36,000. 900 miles per hour. That's somewhat of a reasonable number because the uh, to sustain orbit around the Earth, an object needs to be moving at 17,500 miles an hour. This object, the Voyager 1, has had enough speed to leave the Earth. It has enough speed to leave the solar system. It has enough speed to overcome the gravitational pull of the Sun. It's outward bound, headed for the stars in uh, multiple tens of thousands of years from now, it'll be uh, at a distance of a nearby star. It's 60,000 years or something from my memory. But just a little fun there with Voyager 1. Our main concept here would be the uh, relationship. Speed of light is wavelength times frequency. And then distance equals rate times time. All forms of electromagnetic radiation travel at the speed of light. So you should do your own practice with that and ask your instructor if you have questions.